everyone, a uh, quick video and a uh, quick intro. My name is Scott, I'm the CTO at Soligo. Um, and in addition to helping us build the product, I'm a heavy user. Um, I'm one of those people that the only way I can really understand anything is by doing it firsthand. All right, so I've been our primary admin for our own uh, internal Soligo Inc. Integrator IO account since the beginning. Um, some quick stats there. So at Soligo, we have approximately 60 employees um, actively set up uh, inside our Integrator IO account. Um, we are using 48 different endpoint apps in production spread across 321 um, flows and automations. All right, so in this video, uh, I wanna walk you through what I consider to be the best practices as it relates to setting up your Integrator I.O. account for lots of users across different teams uh, to work independently uh, and be successful with the product. Um, I want to put a big disclaimer that data security um, is the primary driver for pretty much every recommendation that I'm going to make. Um, I view Integrator I.O. as a, a single point of failure as it relates to security uh, and keeping data safe because it's connected to all your apps and all your different systems. Uh, and if you don't do it right, then someone can hack into Integrator I.O. Uh, and then access everything else. So uh, we treat this uh, really seriously at Sligo and obviously we have all the product features necessary for you to do the same. All right, so let me... Um, jump right into this. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is sign in. And what I want you to notice right off the bat is that um, I'm signing in right here as the owner user, and this is a generic user. So in this, count, this case, we're just looking at a playground account, um, but I have a generic email not associated with the person set up as the owner of this integrator IO account. Uh, that is important because people come and go and you don't want to ever lose access to your integrator account. Um, so setting the initial uh, user up as a generic email uh, is definitely a best practice. If you've already signed up for integrator with a, a, a person's email, um, just go over to the um, profile page, click edit, and you can change the email uh, to be something generic. Um, once you have that owner email in there, um, I also highly recommend going over to the security page uh, as the owner user and enabling MFA for that user. Um, I'm sure you're gonna have a good password for this user, but the second factor in this day and age is just critical. Uh, people find all sorts of creative ways to um, hack at your passwords, and it's just definitely a best practice to have that second form of authentication. Um, once you've set up this owner user with a good password, have the MFA, I would save the password to some sort of password vault. Um, you know, have one of your other admins do the MFA for it and, um, and then just lock this user away and never use it. Okay, so now you've got the owner user set up. The next thing you're going to want to do um, is go over to the users tab in your account and you're going to start inviting users into your account and the first users that you're going to want to invite in are admin users so admins can do everything that an owner can do except you're gonna want to uh, link the admin to specific people so it's very important that every single admin is linked to one person and you do not use generic emails or shared emails for your admins um, and this is because you're gonna wanna audit what they do. Now, you're not gonna be watching what they do all the time, but if something bad happens to your account, that's where you're gonna go back in. You're gonna be looking at the audit log in your account, and you're gonna say like, well, if something was changed that only an admin can do, I wanna go see which admin made that change and so on. So, um, you know, day-to-day -day changes always should be linked to individual people, and then your admins are gonna be your, that's the role you wanna use so they can do anything they need to do. Um, okay, so now, once you have your admins established, um, I highly recommend um, turning on SSO. So single sign-on is just super usable for everyone in the account. They can click, um, you know, as long as they're in the SSO portal, uh, you have the identity provider um, established, then it's one click to get into the account. 
Um, it's much easier to centrally um, uh, turn people off, uh, turn people on. Um, so it gives you a lot of control just for your business. Always best to use SSO, and then in Integrator, obviously, it's it's really it's really easy to set up. Um, you know, you can do Azure, Okta. We use Google um, Apps at Celigo. Uh, if for some reason you cannot do SSO, um, then I highly recommend uh, requiring MFA for all of your users. So I'm here as the the owner. Um, I can require MFA, um, and all the admins can set this. Um, you can, when you invite someone into your account, when you invite your employees in, you can require that they set up MFA, and I highly recommend doing that if you can't use SSO. Um, again, just because in this day and age, you know, passwords, uh, even if you make them really good, really hard to guess, impossible to guess, um, it's still. There's, there's ways that hackers get access to this stuff. And the second factor, authentication, is your, is your main protection. OK, so now uh, let's say, so you've got your owner user established. You've got your admins established. You're using SSO, ideally. If not, you're requiring MFA. So now everyone coming in the account is secure. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do, so now you're ready to start bringing in kind of the masses. Um, so like at Celigo, we've got our owner, we've got me as the admin, now I'm ready to start inviting all the employees in. Um, and, and so what you're going to want to do is go over to your homepage and start to map out like, well, what are the teams? I like to think of it in terms of teams. What are the teams of people that are going to be um, building automations, um, syncing data. There's a lot of different terms, integrating apps. Um, they're all kind of the same though. Um, what are the teams that are going to be doing this work? And then establishing an integration folder. So create integration folder um, for each team, one for each team. And then once you have um, the folder established, what you're going to want to do, and you can do this as the admin for some of these in advance, um, you know, especially if some of the teams are less technical, you're going to want to go over and create the connections to the apps that these people are going to need to work with. So if you're doing something, uh, actually what I'm going to do is go back over to um, the HR team. Um, I may build the connection to Sage. I may build the connection to Salesforce, to, to the ERP um, in advance for them. And then also really important um, thing I want to highlight here, when you create a connection to, let's say, the ERP, um, you're not going to create a connection that has admin privileges to that ERP unless you want the HR team to have admin privileges. Instead, you're going to give them a role within that connection um, to do just the work that they need to do for the ERP. Um, and then when you look over, when you go over to, um, you know, let's say your ops team, um, they might have a separate connection to the same ERP, but with a different permission set at that connection level to the ERP because they're going to be doing a lot more administrative type stuff in your ERP and maybe they do need admin access. Um, so within each of these integration folders, um, you can set up any number of connections to the same apps that other uh, integration folders are using, but you can do granular permissions so that the people working in this um, integration folder can only do the things that you want them to do for those apps. Um, a lot of times too, I think it's uh, the people that are working in these folders will also just create their own connections. So they can just come over here, create a connection, um, and typically, you know, when they get a connection and it's going to ask them for their OAuth um, to authentication or they're going to go get an API token from that app, um, you know, you may have the permissions in those other apps set up such that they can't even get access to greater things. And, and so they can also set these things up um, in accordance with that rule where at most they're allowed to create connections to the things that they have access to. Um, and, and so you may decentralize the them you know, creating their own connections. All right, so I'm going to bounce back to the home page. Um, and again, so I, I want to establish the high level teams like engineering team, HR team, ops team, finance team, uh, product management team. Um, within there, I'm going to either establish the connections that they're going to use in advance or let them create them themselves. 
Um, and then once I have the teams there, I'm going to um, I'm going to invite people now into those folders. So this is really cool how you can do this. Um, I can invite any number of users into my account. And again, it's legal. We have approximately 60. And then for each user, I'm just going to enter um, their email. You can do a bunch of people at the same time. Um, when I go to assign the roles and permission, um, you know, I could give them admin, manage all, man monitor all, but that's like a, those are account level things. Most of the time I'm doing this custom role where I'm saying like, hey, I'm going to invite Scott into the account. Um, he is on the ops team and he is also um, helping build stuff for HR and then for um, engineering, he's going to help monitor the integrations, um, but that's it. And so now when I click done and invite, uh, Scott can go in and, and create and build stuff for these teams, but at most monitor the things happening for the engineering team. And so now I've given Scott a very specific set of permissions um, to work in very well-defined workspaces such that he is not, I can see exactly what apps he has access to, everything he does in those apps, um, I can audit. Um, and this just allows me to be really granular, but also um, decentralize, um, you know, looking at what everyone's doing. I'm just putting them in the right teams with the right apps and letting them work. Okay, so um, I think that's about it. Um, so again, it's, it's owner, user, admins, and then you want to set up these workspaces, these integration folders for all the people to come in and work. I highly recommend doing it from a team standpoint. That's the easiest way to model it. Um, you can have more than one engineering team. Maybe there's sub teams. That's okay. Um, and then, you know, once you've got people coming in, the last thing I would say is I highly recommend having everyone in your org attend uh, Sligo University. So we have a lot of free courses um, to help you be successful. Uh, we notice a, a very big difference between the people that go through those courses and don't in terms of how good they are with the product afterward and how quickly they can start building meaningful things for our business. Um, so again, highly, highly recommend attending Sligo University once you start inviting people in. And then, you know, just get out of the way. Um, you'll be surprised how creative people can get quickly, um, solving problems, automating things that span different apps. It's really awesome. And uh, yep, that's it. So happy integrating everyone. Talk to you later.